Okay, so now we're going to talk about multi-threading. So we can fix that problem where our Cassini app, when we click on the big image, it just froze. Okay, when you build an app, never have it freeze like that, ever. In fact, if it freezes like that, probably you won't get through the App Store approval process. Okay, so the only way to stop it from freezing is to use multi-threading. Okay, so multi-threading just means we're going to have different threads of execution, okay, different places in, in our iPhone or iPad where code is running, okay? And these, these appear to run simultaneously, but it'll even work on a single core processor, okay? Not a multiprocessor. It, it works then by time sharing, okay? So you got one thing running, another thing running, and it's kind of going back and forth, run, letting them each run a little bit. And maybe if one of them's more important than the other, it gets to run a lot, and the other one doesn't get to run so much, okay? But that's basically what multi-threading is all about. So how many people have, have done any multi-threading programming of any kind? Okay, so some of you have. Okay, about, about a little less than half of you. Okay, good. So in iOS, multi-threading is about queues. Okay, queue meaning, like if you go to the movies, maybe in England, uh, they would say, oh, get in the queue, meaning the line to get into the movie, okay? So same thing here, uh, and it's the same thing as queue in the computer science sense, right? A queue is a, thing, a bunch of things lined up to do something, all right? And these queues contain an iOS functions, okay? Most of the time these functions are closures, okay, that you've put in there, okay? Blocks of code that you put in this queue, okay? And then the system simply runs along in this queue, pulls the next thing off the queue, and starts it running in a separate thread, okay? And you can have multiple of these queues, and the system is pulling them off each one and running them in their own threads, Simple as that, you just got multi-threading, okay? Now, there's a little bit of trickiness here of what are these queues and how do you put things on the queues, but that's the fundamental way these work. Now, queues can either be serial, which means the function that's on the top of the queue gets pulled off, it runs to completion, and then the next one gets pulled off. That's serial queues. Or they can be concurrent, where the system pulls the top one off the queue, starts it running in a thread, if it's got more thread resources, it takes the next one off, starts it running in another thread while the first one's still running. And it might keep pulling a whole bunch of them off. Okay, so that's a concurrent queue. All right, so let's talk about the queues, how we get them, what, what we call them, et cetera. The most important queue, it's a serial queue called the main queue, okay? The main queue is where all UI activity has to happen. This is super important for you to understand. That if you want to do anything where you call something in UI kit, okay, UI button, UI anything, all right, with a couple of exceptions, which I'll talk about later, uh, you need to be making those calls on the main queue. In other words, you can't put those calls in a closure that you put on some other queue. Okay, it has to be on the main queue. All right. Now, conversely, all non-UI activity that's going to take any amount of time or resources probably wants to be off the main queue, so it never blocks the main queue. We want the main queue reserved for doing our UI stuff as much as possible. Okay? Now, this is not only because we want our main queue UI to be responsive, okay, that's the main reason, but also it serializes the activity on the main queue so that our UI is presented in an orderly fashion. If, if we allowed our UI to be on all these different queues, it could, things would be drawing at all different rates and overlapping, it would be unpredictable as to what happened on screen, okay? So we use the main queue as kind of a synchronization point where everybody comes back to draw on the main queue, all right? Now, the main queue can only pull a closure or a function off of the main queue and work on it when it's quiet. In other words, it's not off doing something else, like drawing or something like, like that. Now, the system is using the main queue behind the scenes all the time. For example, you know about drawrect, right? I told you drawrect gets called by the system, and it doesn't get called, you don't call it, you don't tell it to, you just say set needs display. Well, you set needs display, and as soon as the main queue gets quiet, it goes and runs some function that causes that drawrect to be called. So you see how that works? Okay, so that's what's going on in the main queue. What about other queues? Okay, so there's, I'm gonna, in the next slide, I'm gonna talk about two different kinds of other queues that you can use to run all your non-UI stuff, all right? So the first, uh, I'm not gonna talk about this now, that'll be on the next slide. So on this slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we put something on a queue. And the main way we do it is with this function right here called dispatch async. Dispatch async takes two arguments, one is 
the queue to put it on, like the main queue or one of these other queues. And the second argument is the function to put on the queue. Again, usually it's a closure. You see I'm using trailing closure syntax right there. Okay, this is two arguments. One argument, two arguments. So this is the closure you're going to put on there. What's cool about these closures, they take no arguments and they return no arguments. So they're really easy to, to put into your code. Okay, and you can put anything you want in here. Okay, but if this is going to do UI, you better not put it on anything but the main queue. All right, so how do you get the queue? How do you get this little uh, queue argument? Well, for the main queue, you call this function dispatch underbar get underbar main underbar queue. Now you might ask, why is all these underbars and why does this look like this? Um, this is basically a C API, okay, from uh, iOS before Swift. And so it comes into Swift looking like a C API. These are Swift, these are just Swift global functions. But the reason this is not object oriented, for example, uh, is because this is a C API. This, this is called Grand Central Dispatch, actually. That's why they all start with dispatch, all this multi threading stuff. And that's why it looks like this. Um, I'm going to show you the object oriented way to do this in a minute but actually we're going to end up using these C-like ones more often, all right? So again, all UI stuff has to be on this main queue. It's a serial queue, okay? So nothing happens concurrently on this queue. Things happen in order, in the order they go in, okay? And, uh, but all time-consuming stuff, okay, or even worse stuff that might block, like you're going out to the network to get an image, like we are doing, where that blocks, waiting for the web server on the other side to respond, all that wants to happen off the main queue. Now you still dispatch to that queue using dispatch async, okay? You go down here and you say, look at the bottom, it says dispatch async, not the main queue in here, and I'll talk about where you get that queue in a second, and then open curly brace, so this is a closure. Inside that closure, you do the non-UI thing that takes a long time or blocks, and then still inside this closure, you dispatch async again this time back to the main queue to do the UI stuff that you need, maybe that the image you got from doing this, you now put this in the UI here. So look how I'm dispatching within a closure. So can you imagine this outer closure is off running on some other thread in some other queue, and in the middle of it, it puts a block of code, this block right here, this closure, it puts it back on the main queue, this one continues to run after that. In fact, dispatch async, that function always returns immediately. Because all it does is put things on queues. It doesn't actually execute any of the code inside the block. It just puts that block of code onto the queue. Okay, and then this outer closure just happily runs to completion and it's done. Meanwhile, that inner block has been posted on the main queue and it's just waiting for the main queue for it to be first in line and for the main queue to be quiet and then it'll pick it up and run it. You got it? So this is why we use this C function notation because it reads really cool. Okay, dispatch off the queue this, then dispatch the main queue this. Okay, it reads very clearly to the person who's reading your code what you intend. Okay, but you do have to remember that this is a sync. It's out of sync. Just because you say to execute this code, it's not going to happen right away. It's just being put on that queue. It'll happen sometime in the future when that queue is ready. Okay, when it, when it rises to the top of that queue and uh, the main queue is quiet, okay? So how do we get these not the main queue queues, okay? We want to run something else on. Well, there's really two ways to do it. The most common way is to use one of the concurrent queues provided by the system, okay? Now, these queues provided by the system, there's four of them, okay? They each have what's called a quality of service. And the quality of service is really how much attention the system gives to them. Okay? You can think of it as their priority. High priority queues get a high quality of service. They get serviced a lot. Okay? But it's not purely that, but it's generally that. Okay? So what are the four qualities of service here? One is user interactive. Okay? So you can get a queue. You can call this dispatch get global queue right here. And you can say, give me the user interactive queue. Again, it's a concurrent queue. So it's doing things concurrently. It's not serial. And user interactive means the user just asks to do something, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I don't want to do it on the main queue, but I need this done as soon as possible, because I'm, the user is interacting with me right now, okay? So this is very high priority, but lower priority than the main queue, okay? So this might be something where the user is dragging with their finger, and you're having to calculate something to make the image that's 
pretty intensive time-wise, and so you put it off in the thread, the user continues to drag, they're not seeing the result, and then the result comes back in, and then the user gets to see the result. So the result is a little bit behind their finger because it takes so much time, but at least as their finger tracks, the main queue is still listening to their finger, okay, and responding, okay? So <clears throat> that's what user interactive is for. User initiated means the user just asked me to do this, but it's not in the middle of an interactive event. So you can take a little bit of time, but get back to me right away, because the user just asked for this right now. Okay? So that's lower priority, obviously, than an interactive thing. Okay? Utility is something that usually runs in the background for a long time. Okay? Maybe it's fetching data, it's cleaning up some database somewhere. It's doing something that the user didn't ask to do, but that needs to be done for this program. So it's kind of a, that kind of thing. And then background is even lower priority. This is the kind of thing, well, it could run today or tomorrow, you know, you know it's really not something I need done right away, I don't really care. Um, so it's kind of just a, uh, something that runs along in the background. It's only gonna happen when things are really quiet, when nobody wants any other service, okay? So you get the, one of these four queues by saying dispatch get global queue. You specify which one you want. Then this has this extra argument comma zero, which is reserved for future use. So you just always put comma zero there. And that's going to give you back a queue, a dispatch under bar QT that you can then use as your first argument to dispatch async. Okay? So these are the, this is the queues, these are the queues you're most often going to put this work that needs to be done in the background onto. Now it's also possible if you create your own serial queue, okay? You call dispatch queue create, you give it a name, this can be any name you want, okay? This is usually just so you can see it in the debugger, okay? This name is gonna appear in the debugger. And then you say dispatch queue serial, saying you want a serial queue. Now you'll get a serial queue of your own. And it's gonna be pretty high priority queue, nothing like the main queue, but pretty high priority. Uh, why would you ever want a serial queue? Let's say you had a big table that you wanted to download 1,000 images to put in that table, small little images, okay? Well, you could do it on one of these, user-initiated queues or something like that, but it's gonna fork off a whole bunch of threads and try to download as many as it can concurrently, open a whole bunch of network connections. And all. Whereas if you do it serious, serially, it'll do them one by one, okay? So it kind of throttles, it's a throttling, a way of throttling your access to the network, right? You usually don't need this. These are usually what you're gonna use for that not main queue queue. Okay, now we're only seeing the absolute tip of the iceberg on uh, multi-threading here, okay? Um, there's a lot more to GCD, Grand Central Dispatch. Uh, you can look in the documentation for all the functions that start with dispatch underbar and you'll get an idea. There's at least a couple dozen in there. Um, I don't have time to cover it in this class. Um, you won't need it. You won't need anything more than I just showed you for the work that you're going to be doing in your assignments. In your final project, you probably also won't, won't need any more than that, but at least you know where to look uh, if you might need more. Um, there is an object-oriented way of doing all this. Called, there's two classes, NS Operation Queue, which is kind of like dispatch queues, and NS Operation, which is kind of like it, those closures, right, those little functions. Um, why would you ever want this? These do have a little bit of extra functionality uh, that they wrap from GCD. Things like, hey, I have these two operations and this one depends on this one finishing, okay? And so I'm gonna put them in a concurrent queue, but don't let this other one go until the first one finishes, right? So dependencies, you can have dependencies and things like that. Um, we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, you can look at the documentation if you want. Uh, you can do, I think, almost everything here with GCD. Um, this would be more if you actually are building something where there's queues are doing, uh, queues and these operations are doing the actual calculation, like as your model is doing, you're doing some scientific app and it's actually doing all this complex calculation where things depend on each other and all that stuff. And so it has a lot of queues and a lot of operations going. You wouldn't use it as much for things like I'm fetching some from the network and I need to put it in the UI and I want that fetch to happen in another queue, right? That kind of stuff, you're just going to use the dispatch underbar. Okay. Now, in addition to dispatch underbar, you have to understand multi-threading from the perspective of how iOS's API uses it. Because there are plenty of methods all throughout iOS that do what they do asynchronously using threads, okay? And the way you see this in the API is that one of the arguments to these methods is a, is a closure, right? It's gonna be a closure you provide. And the documentation for that function will say, your closure is executed off the main queue asynchronously. 
So what kind of methods are we talking about here that do that? Here's one that goes and fetches a URL okay, from the internet, downloads it from the internet. And when it, and it does it asynchronously, obviously you wouldn't want to block the main queue waiting for this URL to load. And when it comes back, it calls this closure right here. Okay? Now inside this closure, you might want to do some UI things, like maybe you downloaded an image and you want to put it. But you can't put that code right inside here because this closure is executed on a different thread and on a different queue than the main queue. So what you would have to do in here is the same thing you have to do with the dispatch under bar async, which is you have to wrap dispatch bar async get main queue around it. Okay, so here's the method. This is an iOS method, download task with request. It takes this last argument, which is a closure, and inside there you're going to have to do this dispatch to the main queue because if you want to do something in the UI, because this is not happening, this closure will not be executed on the main queue. Got it? So we will talk a little bit about, you're just going to run into occasional <coughs> iOS APIs that take these closures and they're asynchronous, and you just have to know that if you want to do anything in the UI, you're going to have to dispatch async back to the main queue. All right, so let's